this lecture, we consider modal decomposition of state space models. This is part of our overall uh, unit on dynamic system modeling. So we've looked at a number of facets of dynamic system models. <clears throat> In this case, we're going to be looking at uh, similarity transformations and A invariant subspaces. So we're going to be looking at a number of things here. We've talked about similarity transformations before, and uh, let's let's review what we're talking about here. Given a state space model, and in this case we're considering continuous time state space model, x dot is equal to ax plus bu, y is equal to cx plus du. We're now given a non-singular matrix T. It's we I use the symbol T because it stands for transformation, but otherwise it's just a non-singular matrix. And so we're going to change coordinates from x to z using this transformation matrix. And because the matrix is non-singular, uh, that means we're not losing any information. So we can go, for, you know, given x we can find z, given z we can find x, so we're not losing any information. So that's an important part of this similarity transformation. So in the new coordinates, z, if we differentiate the equation, z dot is equal to t, t is a constant matrix times x dot. Okay, so all we've done is just differentiating the, that transformation equation. But x dot is equal to ax plus bu, and so this can be written this way, ta, db, and now x can be written as t inverse z, so we have this equation. And so this becomes our new a, here I've written it as a tilde, and this becomes our new b, I've written it as b tilde. Similarly, we now have the output y is equal to c x of t, x of t is t inverse z plus du. So the new C matrix is C, I call C tilde, C T inverse. And the new D matrix actually is the same as the old D matrix. So we have this form of the similarity transformation. We have input U, output Y, and we have A, B, C, D matrices, which we can write in terms of the tilde matrices this way, or we can write it in terms of the tilde matrices this way, in terms of the original matrices, and they're equivalent to each other. Notice that the inputs are the same in both cases, outputs are the same in both cases. What's different are the internal coordinates. So I've written it in this ABCD form. Um, what about the transfer function? So let's start with the original transfer function, D plus C SI minus A inverse B. I'm going to assert, insert an identity matrix here. In this case, the identity matrix looks like T inverse T. And so <clears throat> C T inverse is C tilde. And T B is B tilde. And so then I have T S M minus A inverse T inverse. I can put that all together into an inverse matrix this way. So T SI minus A in SI minus A T inverse quantity inverse. So the the product of these three matrices has this inverse. I can distribute the T and the T inverse through. So T times I times T inverse gives just I. And then I have T A T inverse which is what we called A tilde. And so you can see that the ABCD matrices give us a transfer function, and we get the same transfer function with the C tilde, A tilde, B tilde matrices. So basically what this is saying is that the transfer function is invariant with respect to state, the state representation. So regardless of the state variables we use. So an important question is then, why would we use a similarity transformation? Well, in some cases, the state model representations reveal more insight into others when you do a similarity transformation. The 
two most common we're going to be using are the modal uh, transformation and the block triangularizing transformation. We'll get to the block triangularizing transformation in a couple of units. But those are the two that we're going to use mostly. Um, otherwise, some um, transformations allow our system to be more effective in when, when it comes to doing computations. Some transformations are better for analysis. So there are a number of reasons why we might want to choose to do a similarity transformation. Thanks for watching.